Good morning everybody, it's your pal Martin Mellet here. Hope you're going well. Just at London Bridge station today, making my way to the Northern Line. Because today we're going to go to Hampstead. Now, why are we going to Hampstead today? Well, in the last few days with all the tributes to Lillian and John, I've actually discovered that she lived in Hampstead in her early years. Like, Olivia came back to the United Kingdom in 1966 after winning a competition on Australian TV. And she came here with her mother, and then sooner or later her friend Pat Carroll came, and they used to do a touring show around Europe called the Pat and Olivia show, which like lasted for a couple of years until Olivia put out her first proper album in the 1970s. So, uh, Olivia's mom, Irene, they originally moved to uh, Hammersmith, that's why I read in the autobiography. But then Irene was renting a place in Hampstead, and then many years later, Olivia bought a house in Hampstead in 1973. And this is where Olivia lived uh, before she moved to America, but also in the times when Olivia had to do work in London, like most of her earlier albums were recorded in London itself, she would call Hampstead a home. And she actually owned this property for many years. I can't really say when she sold that property, but it must have been, uh, I guess she must have sold it in the 70s before you know, taking on America. Because she did live the rest of her life in America. But the interesting thing was, apart from having you know, properties in well, Malibu, Florida, she also owned properties in Australia, where I'm from. So, I'm just waiting for the, the train to take me up to Golders Green first. I need to get breakfast. I've just gotten off the bus up there, and I'm walking to Perrin's Court. This is where Irene Vaughan lived for a couple of years while supporting her daughter Olivia. So, I believe she must have been living on Perrin's Court around the late 60s because Irene and Olivia moved to London in 1966 and that's when she cut her first single uh, which was quite unsuccessful but you know there's always been so many famous people that have called Hampstead home I mean Jim Hansen lived here when he was doing the Muppets so here we are, this is Perrin's Court. Irene and Olivia lived on this street for a couple of years. They were paying nine pounds a week in rent. Which, these days, nine pounds sounds nothing, but back then it was a lot of money, I guess. Uh, I don't know what house they lived in, which it hasn't been told, but basically there was a news report um, on the Daily Mail, it basically said, oh, Olivia lived in West Hampstead, which is just down the road from here, and her mother lived in Perrin's Court. Which, uh, I, I thought was strange, because I do remember reading in her biography, like, this weekend, that, um, Olivia actually lived in Hammersmith when she first came to London in 1966. So I, I don't know why they've confused Hammersmith to Hampstead. I mean, it's still an H thing, but yeah. I like this bakery line. It was like one of these properties up here that Irene and Olivia lived in in the 1960s. I mean, they all look quite old. You gotta remember Hampstead is a, quite an old part of London, I guess. I have finally made it to West Hampstead. I've gone from Hampstead to West Hampstead. Different locations, but still North London, I guess. Anyway, let's go find where Olivia lived. So here we are. Deddington Park Road. Olivia bought a flat at number 9, which had a overlooking like balcony and some sort of garden, I believe. Yes. And so I was trying to find 
the house that she lived in. That's eight. So we have arrived at number nine, Dennington Park Road. The best way to find it is basically just walk down the road, past the big shawl, follow around here, and like, the uh, street sign is basically next to the house. So Olivia bought this property up there in 1973. I, I got no idea when she would have sold it, but I, I believe she must have sold it as soon as she sold in America. Although I would like to think she uses as a base for many years, like when recording albums here and, well, I guess seeing her mum, but actually her mum Irene eventually returned to Australia. So this was bought by Olivia for under £20,000 and right now it's worth 600000 and even the guy who owns the property, he's got the title deeds and it actually has her name on it. And he believes that they should be putting up a blue plaque as soon as possible. But those blue plaques you see up all over London, you've got to wait 20 years till somebody has passed away until you put up a blue plaque. So, there it is, that's a bit of history for you. So anyway, that's a little bit of history for you in London. Another famous resident who called West Hampstead her home. Um, I'd be quite surprised to find out where about in Hammersmith did Irene and Olivia first live when they came here in 1966. Um, anyone who knows, let me know in the comments down below. I've got another exciting thing to tell you that I've made contact with a guy in Cambridge. And he's hopefully going to find out where the Newton Johns lived in Cambridge. Which, he's given me some street, like, uh, addresses, but he basically says he's hoping to find the actual house they lived in in the 1940s and 50s, before the Newton-Johns moved to Australia. Anyway, this is Martin the Melhead. I'm over and out.